Well, good evening and welcome to tonight's HBF. In this part of our series, as we've been looking through these five core aspects of our identity of who we are in Christ Jesus, in the gospel. And tonight we're looking at who we are as a gospel motivated servants in the way that Jesus served us in laying down his life for us on the cross, how it motivates us to use the gifts, the resources, everything of who we are to serve others. So why don't we just take a moment here as we open up tonight in our Home Bible Fellowships to just pause and to just discuss together ways in which you've been encouraged by seeing other people serve in the church, serve you in the church, or ways in which God's used you to serve others before we come to unpack our passage tonight. Let's just pause for a moment with that. I'm sure there's been lots of ways that you've been encouraged to hear how people see you serving in the church and you've been able to encourage others in ways that they serve. We're going to turn to God's word here as we think about who we are as a gospel motivated people who serve. Now we're going to look in First Peter and this letter that Peter writes, uh, Lord willing, we'll unpack next year in a sermon series as we look in focusing on the whole year as who we are as a gospel motivated servants, as a people. But in Peter's letter to the Christians, he's writing to a people who are dispersed, who are spread out from Jerusalem because of persecution. They've been scattered among the nations. And he writes them to encourage them that God has a purpose in their struggle. That when they find themselves in a culture, in a community where they're maligned, where they're misunderstood, where they're mistreated, to see it as a joy because God is using them to make known the gospel in that place. Now, the same is true for us. We are a minority in the culture in Scotland today. We may live in a post-Christian world where Christendom, where the church was the centre of society at one time 50 years ago, 100 years ago. But we now find ourselves, if we think about it, misunderstood. We're, we're looked at by the community around us as strange. We're supernatural people who talk about miracles, who talk about spiritual experiences. And we're looked at and we're thought of as strange but let's turn together to our text here. 1 Peter 4, starting from verse 7 through to verse 11. Let's read together. Here in this passage, Peter has exhorted the Christians to be aware of the times that they're living in. To be conscious that the time is short, the Lord's return could be imminent. We are living in the end times. The end of all things is at hand. And so he says to them, be self-controlled, be sober-minded. Have clear thoughts about the church, about your life, about the decisions that you make, about what you commit your time to, your treasures to, your talents to. Peter here is telling us in the church too, to be focused, self-controlled for the sake of our prayers. And so first of all, as we spend some time here tonight, as your Home Bible Fellowship, as we think about these things, I wonder, what are your prayers? What are the gaps that you see in the service in our church that you've been praying for? Perhaps you look at people that you feel like they're not being cared for well. Perhaps you look at areas in the church where you see people serving and being stretched and, and burned out. And you think, I wish there was more people that would come alongside and help in that area. In what ways are you praying for the sake of your prayers that God would do something? And in what ways do you see people praying 
and serving. And it, and it thrills your heart to see God responding and answering those prayers. I know for me personally, we've been praying together as elders for Gavin and the children's ministry for some time. I was serving previously in the Wednesday night Illuminate and there was a real need for leaders there. There was a real need for a team to be brought together because it was a new ministry. Well, praise God, I look at it now and I'm not even there serving anymore. There's a, a vibrant, thriving team alongside Gavin and Joanna. And it, and it thrills me to see that every Wednesday night. So what areas do you see God answer in prayer, causing people to serve? Or what areas do you see there a need for people to step up and serve in our church fellowship? Peter goes on in this text and he goes on to say, not just for the sake of your prayers, but above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As we express our love for one another and as we express our love for those in our community, I wonder in what ways do we see people serving in the gifts of hospitality? Sure, there are home Bible fellowship leaders in the home that you're sitting tonight that are hosting you, that are showing hospitality. But I wonder in what ways has someone shown love and care has been hospitable to you? And this has been a huge blessing in your Christian walk. Perhaps you could share with the group how people using this gift of hospitality, serving in that way has been a huge impact in your Christian walk. Or perhaps share what ways you can serve. We can show hospitality with one another and love with one another without having them in our homes. We can take a meal round. We can just serve them uh, at the church, ask them if they want a cup of tea or coffee, go and get them what they need. We can show love and care and hospitality in many different ways. So why don't we just spend a few moments together discussing what ways have you been blessed by someone's love and hospitality as they've served you? And what ways can you show love and hospitality in our church family and fellowship just now? The final portion of the text that Peter writes and exhorts the church to is not just to be self-controlled and to be clear-minded in their prayers, not just to love and show hospitality, but look in verse 10. As each has received a gift, so use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. He says, whoever speaks, as one who speaks the oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You know, when we think about serving, each of us have been given a gift. You might think to yourself, well, what is my gift? What do I have to offer? Well, in Romans 12 and many other places, 1 Corinthians 13, in many other places, we, we see how each of us have a different thing to bring to the table. Yours might be unable to leave the house, unable to be out and about much. But like many saints in the church, I can think of one particular that comes to my mind. Uh, Hazel McGonigal or Lottie Wright, how they write letters, emails, text messages, cards of encouragement. Often, and I know it's not just for me, this is a gift of encouragement to the church. And this is one of the ways they can serve the other. What about people who serve in the bridge, volunteering, waiting on tables, cleaning, things like this? Perhaps you are unable to do many practical things, 
but perhaps you have resources sitting in your home, your garage, your bank account, that you're able to contribute and serve and bring to the table and say, you know, there's not many things I can do, but I can provide the resources that will allow these things to happen. Maybe that's one of the ways that God is calling you to serve. Perhaps you're a simple guy who can just paint and decorate, who can sand a wall or or prepare a surface to be uh, varnished, whatever it might be. Perhaps you want to serve in the hospitality or the the building prep or the, the maintenance teams. We all have different gifts. The noble gifts are the ones that, that are seen and that everyone seems to celebrate and rejoice. But you know what's more noble is the things that no one even knows happen. But an army of faithful servants are in the background making it happen. So I wonder if we could just take a few moments to discuss together. Look around the room where you're sitting and let's take a moment to look at the other people around you and to share what you see as gifting in someone else in the room. Oftentimes it's hard to see things in our own self, but it's hugely encouraging when we see someone else come to us and say, you know, you are great at this. I see you as really gifted in that area or really capable in that area. Use that. Be encouraged to do that thing, whatever it might be. So let's take a moment to share about something you see in someone else in the room and to maybe reflect on how you might then use that gift that they see in you to serve the church. So how are you going to serve? How are you going to use your gifts and abilities, your treasure, your talent and your time to bless others as we glorify God together on this mission that we're in? Here's just a few things that I'll have on the screen here. How about serving in the children's ministry? There's always a need for people to come alongside and facilitate. Maybe it's even just checking people in. How about serving down on the bridge? Many of you already know the pleasure of what it is to serve and sacrifice your time down there. How about serving in the administration team? You know, there is great needs in administration in the church at this time. We're a growing church. Lots of things happening. How about serving if you have a gift of communication and helping to coordinate news and updates and things that are happening in the life of the church? How about serving in the audio or visual team at the back that help run services? You know, no one even hardly notices them there, but they perform a vital service in making the sound and the audio work, making the screens work. How about coming under Stevie G and being trained to run the computer like that? How about serving in the building maintenance or the building preparation teams? There are great needs to have the building set for each individual ministry that goes on in the church. You know, John Lambert and his team, Malk and Steve and others come and they set out the chairs, they set out the tables, they tear down, they set up for another ministry. This is a huge work and maybe you can just contribute some of your time if you're not serving in other areas. But maybe the Lord's really stirring you by his spirit for things that aren't yet being done. Perhaps you want to take a meal to someone who's lost a loved one or has been in hospital, practical areas of service. Maybe you want to set up a team that helps with transport, people that struggle to get to church because of bus times or what have you. Or perhaps you want to just be an encourager that sends emails, text messages, cards. Whatever it is that the Lord's doing, what is he calling you to do as we focus next year on being a gospel-motivated people who serve. I pray that God would really bless you in your serving. 